Say when it. Yeah, I'm gonna just let the leg. Down. Yeah, but I'm gonna let the one of the leg. If one of these legs will go up some more, which way it takes it straight? That makes it more crooked. So it needs to go that way. You know, this can adjust too. Is what the other thing is. Oh, can it? Yeah, so it really needs to be, see? It looks like it's going to wobble. So let me see. It's fine. It's not that bad. But you see, you see it here. I don't see it. Hey, you don't mind. It's on. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank God for his goodness. How he has sustained us. He has kept us in the midst of all of our trials. Welcome to Noonday. We say to all of our members of the church, God bless you. Thank you so much for continuing in your faithfulness of being a disciple. Again, to all of our visitors, thank you so much for committing to join us today for Noonday Bible Study. As always, we want to encourage you to continue to be safe, smart, and sensible. And of course, please be prayerful. We understand with the recent governor's uh, lift of uh, those uh, restrictions that we still want to be careful. We want to mask up. We want to continue to practice social distancing. And again, just be safe. Just be safe as we uh, begin to uh, move forward. Let me also 
also thank uh, the members of this congregation under the leadership of the men of the church. On yesterday, we were able to bless uh, about 500 families uh, with uh, fruit and vegetables. And so thank you so much, my honor, for your faithfulness, for your commitment. And of course, uh, thank God for the men of the church who uh, led us in this effort. And we will continue to do this uh, for the next Mondays, few Mondays or so. And we will announce uh, these dates and times to make sure that the word gets out. Again, let me thank the men of the church as well as the members of the church uh, for partnering uh, in this endeavor. And again, families were blessed, and so thank you so, so very much. We want to apologize for technical difficulties we had on last week. Uh, we're pressing our way, and uh, today we're going to resume our, our noonday topic, um, Watch Your Mouth. We had about 15 different tones, and so uh, today we want to add one more to the list, and that is the betraying tone. The betraying tone. Let me ask you this question. What is the difference? What is the difference uh, between gossip and betrayal? What is the difference? Well, the betrayer is more intentional than the gossiper. Gossipers uh, may not necessarily put the headset off the volume. They didn't put the headset on, so you can try to see the volume and stuff. Because they say they're having trouble hearing. And let me go put the headset on. Yes. So let me give you a second. You give, me, give me one second. We apologize. try this again. We apologize. Please forgive us uh, for the technical difficulties. I think we're okay, so let's just uh, start from the top. We're talking about the betrayer, the betraying tongue. It raises the question, what is the difference between uh, gossip and betrayal? What is the difference? Well, the betrayer is more intentional than the gossiper. Gospers may not necessarily harbor ill will towards an individual, but the betrayers um, are out to hurt. They are out to harm. They are out for blood. That is the basic difference. Well, what, what does it mean to betray? Well, to betray is to divulge information in breach of a confidence. Remember, if someone begins to say to us, listen, I'm sharing this with you, I haven't told anybody else, then that's the clarion call, that they are sharing this with us in confidence. And for us to share it with someone else, that is betrayal. If they would have wanted others to know it, then they would have shared it with them. So, number one is to divulge information um, in breach of a confidence. Number two, it is to share secrets with the enemy. Um, the person who is a betrayer, uh, again, is out to hurt or harm 
uh, an individual. And so they will take the information to someone um, who is not a friend, but a foe. So it is to share secrets with a known enemy. It is to give information to someone uh, with the goal of doing harm. Here's a third demonstration or description of betrayal. It is to commit relational treason by violating the trust someone has placed in them. Again, the only people who can hurt us are those who are closest to us, those who are near us, are those who know us, those who have information. And so uh, betrayal, again, is to commit relational um, treason. Well, this state decimation, and I mentioned it at the top, betrayal is a more blatant act than gossip. Here again, uh, the person who is the betrayer is out to harm an individual, whereas the gossiper, you know, some people just love to, to talk. But let's see what the scriptures has to say about uh, betrayal. First, we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 11. Verse number 13, Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 13. It reads, a gossip goes about telling secrets. The one who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a confidence. Now let's go to John chapter 18, verse number 2. John 18. Of course, we know that this uh, speaks of what Judas would do uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, verse number two, now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. And here again, a betrayer, again, knows an individual. They know they're going out. They know they're coming in. They know their routine. They know locations and all of that. And so that is why it's such um, a painful experience is because only a friend uh, can hurt. Only a friend can hurt us in that regard. Well, let's go up to Matthew 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse number 10. See if this uh, rings any relevant tones in your ears. Listen to verse 19. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. That's Matthew 24, 15. But now First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12, verses 16. 17. 1 Chronicles chapter 12. Yes, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verses 16 and 17. Some Benjamites and Judites came to the stronghold to David. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come to me in friendship to help me, then my heart will be knit to you. You have come to betray me to my adversaries, though my hands have done no wrong. Then God, may the God of our ancestors see and give judgment. Here again, betrayal, nothing new. It has always happened. It has always existed, and it takes place today. As I've stated in some way, the goal of the betrayer is to hurt the person. It is to inflict, draw blood. There are a couple of matters we discuss. We have a sense of uh, what is the trouble. We've heard what the Bible has to say about it. And then number three, are you a betrayer? Have you ever betrayed confidence. This is for each of us to, to look at ourselves. If that were the case, 
what was the payoff? Did we gain some advantage because of it? Was there an unresolved conflict between us and another individual? Why did we do it? Were we jealous of the individual? Were we envious at the time? And then here comes this spiritual question. Have we repented for this sin? I want each of us to think about that. Well, what happens if we have been betrayed? How do we handle that? What are some reasons? Well, number one, were we reaping what we have sown? That is, we were guilty of betraying someone else, and it came back upon us. So now, again, we can relate to what we, the pain we had, in fact, afflicted on someone else. Number two, what valuable lesson did we learn from the incident? Is this something that uh, we have vowed never to do again? What did we learn from betraying another individual? Number three, if we were betrayed, have we released the offender in our hearts and no longer desire vengeance? Has God healed us of having been betrayed? Are we still angry at the individual? Are we still upset at the individual? Have we released um, them of the offense so that we can go on living? Or are uh, we still under their power? They're still controlling our joy, our peace, our happiness. Here's a statement about when you've been betrayed. It says, learn from the burn. Learn from the burn, but forgive in order to live. Don't stop living because you have been betrayed. If we don't forgive the individual, then they are holding the power over us. We want to forgive. We want to release them so that we can go on living. The relationship will never be the same, but we can, in fact, forgive so that we can keep on living. How do we move forward uh, once we've uh, been betrayed? Or even um, if we have done the betrayal, go both ways. Well, we make up our minds, number one, to become a trustworthy person. If we did the betrayal, then we want to repent of it, and we want to regain our trustworthy status. So decide, resolve to be a trustworthy person. Person, uh, make a commitment to establish oneself as a, tra a trustworthy person. We want to regain that status. Number two, we want to honor confidentiality. Uh, when people share information with us, we want them to know that it stays with us. We will keep, we will not betray a confidence. Honor confidentiality. Number three, Remind yourself of the sovereign plan of God. That is to say, if you have been betrayed, know God saw it happening before it happened. He knew it was going to take place. He was with you while it was going on. And if God did not intervene to stop it, then that is an experience that you and I Though we did not enjoy it, we have to accept it. It is something that happened, and we want to be able to learn from it and move forward. There again, we cannot rule out the sovereign plan of God. God has so many different reasons for what he allows, for what he is behind. And sometimes we have trusted the wrong individual. And so because we can't see it, God has to reveal it to us. That could be a reason why he allows it to happen. But here again, another reason would be that God, we experience betrayal, and we know how much it hurts, and so we don't ever want to do that to the, another individual. Lastly, if you are a trustworthy friend, thank God for making you aware of you. 
There's only a handful of people that you can really trust. Trust, trust me on that. And so if God, if, if people know you as that type of individual, listen, you are rare breed. It, you are a rare jewel uh, because people, so many people, uh, have been hurt by a friend, have been hurt by a close-up saint, hurt, have been hurt by a family member. But again, make it your goal, make it your goal to continue to be a trustworthy friend. Uh, let me uh, just go back to the top just for a moment just to make sure uh, we have a sense of the difference between uh, the betrayer and the gossiper. Here again, the betrayer is more intentional, uh, more blatant. Uh, their goal is to injure. Their goal is to hurt. Their goal is to draw blood. Whereas the gossiper, they just love to talk. They just to like to put information out there. So that is basically the difference between uh, the two. And so if, if this is uh, an area that we struggle uh, in or we struggle with, we want to commit this to God and God will heal us of it and God will give us another chance to become a trustworthy individual. We'll pause now and see if we have any questions about the betraying tongue. Do we have any questions at this time? so much for joining us again please forgive us uh, for the technical difficulties working on those hopefully we have those worked out hopefully we will we'll see you again tomorrow we'll study zoom out study of the book of Habakkuk and again be safe be smart be sensible and of course be proper take care we'll see you again soon